If you work with people to create positive behavioral change, be it hypnotherapist, NLP, practitioner of CBT, counselor, psychotherapist, coach, or anything else, there's something I want to share with you. For over 14 years now, I've also been fascinated with helping people to create personal change quickly. But I still come across so many who believe that lasting change has to take a long time, that real change needs to consist of reliving traumas or deep psychological analysis, or simply the flawed notion that understanding why you have a problem will somehow make it go away. You know, the sort of average number of sessions that Freud had, you know, 1,300, um, you know, which is a bloody brilliant business model. Well done, Sigmund. My name's Howard Cooper, and I wanted to take a couple of minutes to tell you about a great new show I've got coming out in January 2017 called Rapid Change Matters. Talk about the seeds of change. People do get better for all kinds of things. And that's something that I instinctively felt all those years ago. So I've been interviewing top therapists and agents of change about their attitudes, approaches, and the challenges they have in helping people to make behavioral shifts quickly. And I want to share these interviews with you. And I don't think that revisiting extreme pain, extreme sadness, extreme anger is therapeutic. And while sometimes the conversation can be deep, even inspiring, it may even challenge some of the notions many of you have about what constitutes good therapy. I was saying to her, always start with the Indian saying, Hoka hey, it's a good day to die. And as I chat to a variety of fascinating characters, we also have some fun along the way. I'll fix somebody with a 40-year problem in eight hours. I think Jesus took longer in some of these cases. I've, I've read the book. <laughs> now, this may not be true for all of us, but when I was just starting out working with real clients, helping them with issues, I remember feeling so motivated to help people, but sometimes struggled when things that had worked so well in training didn't always translate into the therapy room when seeing real clients. People aren't understanding that, you know, failure is information. You know, when something goes wrong, you learn and you grow from that. I look back now and wish I could have had these conversations with these top people back then. What a difference these insights would have given me. I'm always present in the session thinking can it be today never never kind of slide off into well this is going to be a long haul because i might miss something even now as someone who's been effectively working with people rapidly for many years each interview i do i still get to hear a little nugget of information an idea a concept that refines my thinking still further if you're really really kid gloves on softly so are you okay if you're using that excessive faux gentleness uh, even with the best of intentions you're communicating a message that the client's fragile but who am i well as well as working for the last 14 years helping create change using a blend of nlp hypnosis tft provocation and humor i've also been one of the lead presenters and change workers with virgin atlantic on their critically acclaimed flying without fear course Having to get on a plane with a hundred or so phobic flyers at the end of these days, having worked with them all, means you've got to get good at helping people. Because the bottom line is, I don't want to be on a plane with a hundred people who are freaking out. It really is that simple. I want to go beyond that. I want to explicitly not understand the world around me, but I want to misunderstand it in a way that gives me more power in the world. So, January 2017. These are being released weekly. They're free to listen to iTunes, Stitcher, whatever you use is fine by me. Just hit subscribe right now to make sure that you never miss an episode.